All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another round. This is Mr. Doolin. I thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at formula writing with covalent molecules. Up to this point, we've taken a look at ionic formula writing. We've used main group metals. We've used transition metals or metals with variable charges. We've used polyatomic ions. We've used hydrates. And in all of that, we actually, since they were ionic, we had to write the ionic charge, right, and then balance out the charges. And that's just a... a, a I guess a byproduct of what ionic bonding actually is, is it's a transfer of electrons, so ions are created. We've got that cation, we've got that anion, and it's a coulombic or ele an electrostatic attraction between the two ions. Now with covalent molecules, there is no transfer of electrons, so there are no ions involved in the bond. So one of the big things that we need to differentiate right off the bat is that with covalent compounds, we don't, and this should be balance, is that we don't actually balance the charge, right? And it should make sense to you as to why we don't, because there is no charge to balance, right? And there, we don't balance the charge, and I'm going to write it real big. There are no ions. That's why we don't balance the charge, ladies and gentlemen. So please, when you're doing your formula writing from here on out, you're going to have to di differentiate and identify when you look at the particular name, whether it's ionic, an acid, or a covalent compound, because there are different rules for writing the formula for all of them. All right? Okay, so now the big question for most people at this point is, how do we actually know how many atoms are in each molecule? And that's a relevant question, right? And the answer is a pretty simple one. They are called prefixes, right? And these are prefixes that you are probably familiar with. The first prefix is mono. That means one. The second one is di. That means there are two atoms. The third one is tri. That means there are three. Then we've got tetra, which is four. Then we've got penta, which is five. Hexa would be six. Hepta would be seven, octa would be eight, nana, like a banana, would be nine, and then deca would be ten, all right? And so, <coughs> excuse me, we'll take a look at a couple of different examples of these, but this is not a complicated process, ladies and gentlemen. You're just looking for the prefixes for, for what you're going to do. Now, the only thing I would say is I would circle mono here and, and I'll tell you, if, if we only have one, one atom of the first element listed, we don't actually write mono, right? By writing the, the element there, we're telling you that there's at least one. But that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the only time that we do not put a prefix in front of the elements in covalent compounds, all right? Did everybody catch that? The only time we don't put a prefix is if it is mono in front of the first element. The only time, the only time, the only time. All right, so carbon dioxide, I know it's a covalent compound. I see nonmetal, nonmetal here with the oxygen. Notice I've still got the IDE ending to signify a singular element, right, or an element from the periodic table. Remember, all covalent compounds are going to have that IDE ending on the name just because there are no polyatomic ions in covalent compounds. Think about that, right? No polyatomic ions because there's no ions, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Okay, so let's take a look at this. Well, I see I'm missing a prefix here. And what was the rule I just gave you? The only time we don't write a prefix is if it's mono in front of the first element. So that means that there is one carbon, right? And then di is my prefix for two, so there are two oxygens. And so carbon dioxide is just CO2. Now, you probably knew that because you've seen and heard of carbon dioxide before, all right? So the only, again, the only trick that you're going to have to get by is the fact that we just don't write mono in front of the first element, and that's it, okay? The other example that I'm going to do with you here is dinitrogen pentoxide. And so again, I see nitrogen, I see oxide, I know I've got a nitrogen oxygen, a covalent compound. I see the prefixes, di and penta, all right? And so di goes with nitrogen, so I know that I've got two nitrogens. Penta goes with the oxygen, so I know I've got five oxygens. So dinitrogen pentoxide is N2O5. 
All right. So again, this is not a difficult process. The ionic formula writing is actually a lot more complicated because we've got a lot of different scenarios that we have to identify. Covalent compounds are really simple, right? You're just looking at the prefixes and that tells you the subscripts, right? Prefixes tell you subscripts. Prefixes tell you subscripts. Prefixes tell you subscripts, all right? If you don't write that down, please write that down. Catch that hint, please, all right? And then the other thing I'd leave you with, ladies and gentlemen, is just got to make sure that you identify the type of compound. You have to identify it as covalent to be able to write the formula using the covalent formula writing rules, okay? All right, that was it, ladies and gentlemen. Short and sweet, to the point. If you have questions, get them down. I'll see you in tutorials. Otherwise, I'll see you in class.